Further, it's mentioned in the book of Isaiah, chapter number 29, verse number 12. The book will be given to thee, and it will be said to him, Pray, read this, but I will say, I am not learned. This is exactly what happened when the first revelation was revealed to Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. And when Archangel Gabriel revealed the first word from Surah Ikra of Surah Alaq, chapter 96, verse number 1, and he said, Ikra, read. The beloved Prophet said, Ma anabikari, I am not learned. This is exactly the fulfillment of the prophecy in the book of Isaiah, chapter number 29, verse number 12. All right, so this, this one is actually so bad, uh, let's just yeah. refute it and move on to, to some that, that require a bit more explanation. Think, yeah. All this requires is the ability to read surrounding verses, to not actually rip one totally out of context. And if you see, if you see what this verse actually says in context, That's right. uh, one, you Muslims should be ashamed that your pol apologists ever dare to quote this and apply it to Muhammad. Uh, and two, I have to say, if you want to apply this to Muhammad, we say, great, exactly. If this is talking about Muhammad, we say, amen. We would love this to apply to Muhammad. Why? Exactly, because yeah. this isn't talking about a prophet to come. Let me read this verse, and let me read the verse so you can see the argument. Uh, so do, um, Isaiah 29, 12. Then the book will be given to the one who is illiterate, saying, please read this. And he will say, I cannot read. Wait a minute. Muhammad was illiterate. Yeah, he was told to right. recite revelations. He couldn't do it. You see here, clear prophecy of a prophet who was to come. Yeah. What happens when we actually read a verse in context? What happens here, Sam? Well, actually, if you read just the entire chapter itself, you'll see that this is judgment against the nation of Israel. God says that he's going to take away <clears throat> their ability to discern the message because of their persistent rebellion and disbelief. In fact, real quickly, let me just look at verses 9 to 11. And you tell me whether this fits Muhammad. Verses 9 to 11, astonish yourselves and be astonished. Blind yourselves and be blind. He's talking to the nation. Blind yourselves and be blind. Be drunk, but not with wine. Stagger, but not with strong drink. For Yahweh has poured out upon you, the nation, a spirit of deep sleep and has closed your eyes and covered your heads. Close your eyes and cover your heads. And the vision of all this has become to you. Who's he talking to? Mm -hmm. To the nation. To you, Israel. This vision that Isaiah is receiving about you and the judgment that will fall upon you, this vision has become to you like the words of a book that is sealed. When men g give it to one who can read, saying, read this, he says, I cannot, for it is sealed. And when they give the book to one who cannot read, saying, read this, he says, I cannot read. So the context is talking about judgment. Mm -hmm. Israel refuses to submit to the warnings and the judgment that God's true prophets bring to her. Therefore, God says, I'm now at the point that that little illumination you had, I'm going to take it away. So that your example is like the example of a person who can read and is given a sealed book, can't read it, it's sealed, or someone who's given a book but is illiterate. That's likening Israel to someone who's illiterate or to someone who's incapable of reading a book because it's sealed. How in the world do you extrapolate from this that this is Muhammad? I don't know, but and, clearly and this, it's not. This is, this is condemning people who say that, right? Precisely. It's people who are making excuses saying, I, I, I can't read this, right? They don't want to hear it. Right? Oh, yeah. So, so you hand it to someone, he says, oh, I, I can't even open this. You hand it to someone else, he says, oh, I can't even read it. It's people who are making excuses and refusing to submit to God's message, right? So if, so if you're Muhammad, saying this is Muhammad, then Ma you're saying Muhammad is a stubborn rebel against God. And that's precisely. why we say if you want to And that's that judgment God, upon yeah. him. He's illiterate because that's God, the sign of God's judgment. And finally, if that's speaking of a literate prophet, well, then verse 11 must be speaking of another prophet mm -hmm. as well, right? Mm -hmm. Why take verse 12 and assume that, see, here's a prophecy of an illiterate prophet, but ignore verse 11? Because 11 says a book will be given to someone who can read, but it will be sealed. So Muslims... That prophet hasn't shown up. That means now you have to wait another prophet after Muhammad who will be given a sealed book and will say, hey, I can't read it. It's sealed. Mm -hmm. So much for Muhammad being the seal of prophets. Let's, let's go. We, we read the, verse, the verses that come before it, but context also involves the verses that come after it. Let's read one more verse. And you tell me why this is important. Yeah. Verse 13, the very next verse after this passage, continuing this theme of condemning people for refusing to listen to God's warnings and message. Then the Lord said, because this people draw near with their words and honor me with their lip service, but they remove their hearts far from me and their reverence for me consists of traditional learned by rote. Therefore, behold, I will once again deal marvelously with this people, wondrously marvelous, and the wisdom of their wise men will perish and the discernment of their discerning men will be concealed. 
Why, why is this important? Why would this be important? Well, number one, it's talking about, again, the judgment that will fall upon the nation. But number two, Jesus actually quotes Isaiah 29, 13 to condemn to, the to Jews. To praise people and say there's another no, prophet coming? No, to condemn the Jews for nullifying the word of God because of their traditions. You'll find that in Matthew chapter 15, verses 1 to 9. He says, Isaiah spoke right about you hypocrites mm -hmm. when he said, and he quotes Isaiah 29, 13 to, to prove beyond any doubt, this is a passage about condemnation. Because the Jews, instead of submitting to the word of God, nullify it because of their traditions. Therefore, if this is about Muhammad, that's even stronger proof that the Quran nullifies the word of God. The Quran is not revelation from God. So, Zakir Naik noticed the pattern. Zakir Naik, desperate to find biblical confirmation of Muhammad, because Muhammad said it's there, pulls a verse out of context, says this is talking about Muhammad. We say, fine, if you want to say that's talking about yep. Muhammad, read it in context. This is not talking about some illiterate prophet. This is talking about someone who uses his illiteracy to reject God's message and reject God's warning. That's what the verses before say. That's what the actual verse says. That's what the verses that come after. And Jesus himself, you regard him as a prophet, Muslims, Jesus himself applies this to people who are in rebellion against God. The exact same passage. Amen. And you Muslims say, this is Muhammad. We agree. Well, Muhammad if this is, is Muhammad, then Muhammad was rebellious against God, and he is under God's judgment for refusing to listen to God's message. Thank you, Dr. Naik, for proving Wasn't that Muhammad Wasn't he supposed to prove that Muhammad is a true prophet? Why is he helping us expose Muhammad as a false prophet who stands condemned by the Lord Jesus Christ? I don't know.